Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. The Michigan Wolverines land a massive commitment Saturday night from the 2025 class. This 2025 class for the Michigan Wolverines has been off to a phenomenal start. I had my lucky socks on for the commitment, had the quarter zip on. And again, before we get into it, I just want to say thank you to you guys, especially the Michigan fans. We talk a lot of college football. We talk a lot of recruiting. But you all know we rock with Michigan. That is our team. And the support you guys have shown, especially the Michigan fans, truly means a lot. There's probably not anything I like to talk about more than Michigan football. My brother can attest to that. So, again, if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We appreciate you guys. Dill, I'm going to kick it off to you. Early thoughts on a very, very strong 2025 recruiting class start. Yeah, I mean, obviously super exciting with Montrez Walker joining Chris Ewell, the four, a four or five-star cornerback out of Florida. And you got two – kind of cornerstone pieces of the re- recruiting class already in play. And of course the caveat is it's awfully early. Oh. For, it is 2025. I mean, that's like a couple of years down the line kind of thing, but nonetheless, it's still, it's better to get off to a hot start than not a hot start. And, and I think for me, especially it's, it's nice to kind of like quiet down the, even the Michigan fan blogs and in the sites of everyone jumping on the recruiting. Oh, it's so bad. Everything's going programs going downhill like that drives me so nuts especially from the michigan fan blogs and sites and pods and 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 whoever's talking about it because it's like i don't know and a enjoy the play on the field because it's been incredible and b like we've seen some weak recruiting classes from michigan turn out really well so like a little in harbaugh we trust maybe and just but nonetheless it is nice to like get some big commitments 24 and now even into 25 and 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 just to quiet the chatter, because it was obviously very much there. And, like, the biggest part that I don't think enough people are talking about is, like, getting a guy from Florida and now getting a guy from Georgia, that's massive. And when it comes to that recruiting momentum, especially in the southeastern United States, you know that's the hotbed for high school football. That is where a lot of the talent comes from. When you look especially where Montrez Walker plays his high school football for Buford, that is probably the best team in the state of Georgia. They have multiple guys who end up in Athens, Georgia, Pretty much every single year. I'm pretty sure in 2024, they put two kids going to Georgia. They're both guys that are top 50 nationally. They've won like, what, four straight state titles in the state of Georgia. And now, what did Montrez Walker say when he was getting interviewed after his commitment? I'm going to bring my boys from down south and tell them to go check out Ann Arbor. And that is massive. Michigan has recruited really well in the state of Michigan, in the state of Ohio. And having some guys that can help you bring up some of that talent from the southeastern United States is absolutely massive. Yeah, no, that is huge because you kind of know Michigan's going to get a fair amount of talent out of the state, but naturally Michigan's not, it's not Georgia, it's not Texas, it's not Florida. It's it's decent football, but it's not nothing incredible. So to be able to recruit out of state is obviously going to be a huge thing for Michigan. And and again, you look at like guys like Montrez Walker and Chris Ewell, both from, Hot, like the the hottest of hotbeds in in high school football, so yeah, that uh, certainly to to win those battles, so that'll be huge for Michigan. And then honestly, it's got to become probably the standard to an extent for for Michigan and one hundred percent be more what you expect. And of course, the play on the field's been incredible, but naturally, you would like to see the steps forward in recruiting and and, and being able, especially out of the state and, and from the southern part of the country. And I, I want to get a little bit to this kid's film and his highlights because when I was watching when I, I he was on my radar because I knew Mich he just had visited Michigan. You're seeing some crystal balls head there. Like when you watch him, he's not necessarily a five star. Uh, keep in mind when you're looking at his recruiting ranking, he's not ranked yet because they only have like 60 guys officially ranked in that 2025 class because it's so early on. He's gonna be a top hundred kid. It it really does seem that way. And again I think you're not necessarily seeing him as a top 50 prospect right now is because he's a little short and he doesn't have that length. And you know the NFL and you know those high school recruiting services want to see those long, rangy guys who have that hyper-athleticism. This guy's a hyper-athlete, but he's a true big-time middle linebacker, and that's why it's so big for Michigan. Like You watch this guy's film and watch his highlights. He plays the game the right way, and he plays a very physical brand. But what's even more important when I was watching him is his instincts from that middle linebacker position, the ability to go sideline to sideline, like you see there, but just filling gaps, being physical and not missing any tackles. This guy, when you say big 10 linebacker, 
that is Montrez Walker because he's a physical specimen who is willing to lay the wood between the tackles. And getting a guy that's this developed as a 2025 class kid, and this isn't only a sophomore who looks like he could be really ready to play college football next year. And so I'm extremely excited about him. And again, you take a look at his highlights. There is a lot to be excited about. Yeah, no, and a hundred percent. And you know, when like, just cause 24 seven doesn't want to rank them. It's like, well, who do I trust the 24 seven scouts? Or do I trust Georgia who obviously wants to win the football team and wants Penn state, LSU, Florida, like Ohio state. I like, these big colleges are, they're the ones who really know how good these high schoolers well, are. They're the ones who can de- evaluate talent. And, and that's and like it, a lot of 24 seven does is they go off like offers. And so you take a look, he already had 25 offers, I believe, for pretty much everyone in the SEC. Ohio State had offered him, Penn State had offered him, LSU offered him, and then obviously Michigan offered him, and he's committed there. But this is a guy that, I mean, every team in the whole entire country wanted him, and you, you watch his highlights. Like, being able to pick through traffic and, like, that instinct from a middle linebacker from, what, a 16-year-old kid is truly impressive. Now I want to get over to, like, what this recruiting trail looks like for Michigan, you see the 2024 class. It's off to a phenomenal start. They already have seven commits. They're a top five class overall. And obviously the, the big the big bugaboo, if you will, is landing Jaden Davis, a top 20 player nationally, the number two quarterback. He's been crystal ball to Michigan. If Jaden Davis heads to the 2024 class and they finish out as if, I mean, if you get Jaden Davis committed, that's looking like it'll finish as a top five or at least top eight class. And then you're already off to a great start in 2025. Oh, in a hundred percent that of course, Jaden Davis is kind of the guy and you like to think that that's going to work, but just, just the fact that the recruiting's like, again, it's kind of roaring back and that, that obviously I, and again, I'm not like the one who sits and watches recruiting and like, Oh, that's what your team's going to be. I think that's stupid. Oh, I think because it, it hasn't been with Michigan. You look at what the players that are contributing the most to Michigan's success on the field have been more the developmental guys who have stayed there and are fourth and feel like the Ronnie Bells, the Mike Barrett's, the Jalen Harrells, like guys who didn't necessarily come in as blue chip five star guys, but have stayed in. And especially yeah. now, you got to identify the right fit in guys who are going to fit yes. the culture because, like, now they can just leave. And you're seeing some programs really struggle, like Texas A and M. I don't. They got a lot of talent, but they're like they're like a revolving door a little bit and. Again, you, you need a mix of both, right? You can't be the 30th ranked class and expect to go compete for national titles, but you got to be in the mix for sure, and you got to get your share of talent. But but you also got to get the guys who are going to fit the culture, and that's the one thing Michigan feels like they've really killed it with, is getting the guys who, who fit the system, hitting the portal at, at times when they need to with guys like Olu, and then this year, obviously, they've really gotten aggressive in it. But that to me feels like the recipe, and, and and I'd like to think Michigan will stick with it and and continue to do what they've done because obviously these last two years have been like a dream. And so- and two things I want to point out is, is one, the guys that Michigan have seemingly put a lot of emphasis on aren't necessarily the guys that twenty four seven is gonna have high in their rankings because they don't play necessarily that flashy spread them out twenty four seven and on three like the high school recruiting services. They value the speed. They value the hyper athleticism. They don't necessarily value the, the play strength. And, and I don't know if the, the word grittiness is a word, but that's kind of the, the Michigan brand. You look how Michigan's won so many football games the last two years. It's a physical brand. They're not necessarily trying to run around you. They're trying to run right through you. And those are guys are not necessarily what 24 seven leans to ranking highly. And then the second thing, Ben Herbert. I mean, we have the best strength and conditioning coach and the best strength staff in the country. I mean, back-to-back Joe Moore award winner, offensive lines and guys who are just, they stay healthy and they're physical and they're fast and they're strong. And Ben Herbert has done a phenomenal job with player development. Yeah. And no, so that, that I'd like to think essentially what my point would be is it's nice to see the recruiting kind of, and I don't want to say pick back up because obviously it was really good. twenty twenty one class, really good. 2022 class, 2023. Again, people like, yeah, the ranking didn't look incredibly good, but I'm not, I mean, we'll see. Like 2018 didn't look incredibly good. Obviously, that was a really good class of turning the program around. So it is nice to like you probably don't want multiple dips necessarily. Like you don't want to be outside the top 20 or right around 20 for like five straight years. Like, okay, you have one year that's 
dips or whatever you want to call it fine but it is not it will be you probably want to be around that 10 to 15 range at, at least that's probably where michigan should be thinking and and again i'm i'm kind of now in the very much the harbaugh we trust like whatever he does I'm and i i trust so. jim's evaluation and the michigan's evaluation of talent because there's no reason the last couple of years to not trust them like going out and finding a two-star in ronnie bell from the state of missouri like jim has shown a great eye for talent and an eye for character and an eye for guys who can get developed. And that's kind of been the recipe is it's not three and done at Michigan. It's guys who stay. Think of like a Mike Bear who didn't play for his th- first three years at Michigan and he stays. He's an all-conference linebacker and then he's coming back for a fifth year to play again. Like that's the type of stuff that Michigan's building this program on and they've had a lot of success doing it. And I ain't going to say to stop I, I, anything of what they're doing. I trust Jim Harbaugh. I trust his evaluation talent out of the high school ranks and I surely trust Michigan and their coaching staff developing these players. But again, when you give a guy like Montrez Walker, uh, you give a coach like Jim Harbaugh and that defensive co- uh, defensive coaching staff a talent like Montrez Walker, it is massive. And a big, big day for the Michigan Wolverines. Wanted to keep this one short on a Saturday night. Hope the Michigan fans have a good night. Appreciate you guys checking us out again. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.